bit out of the way. Okay, today I'm going to show you guys how to do a wrap on rope. Rather be what I use macrame cord, which is right here. Macrame cord, 3 millimeter, 32 ply. If you can find it, find it. But I know most of you guys don't have this. You guys have paracord. Paracord. So that's what I'll be using today instead of my actual macrame cord. So what we want to do is try to get you in burnt off because it's probably laying around looking frayed like this. So to get you that burnt in, just cut it straight off. Get your lighter so it's trash. And burn the end off, not too hot. Let it cool down so don't burn yourself. And then pitch together so everything comes together. Until it's nice and everything is melted together. Once you have that, you want to attach your cone to make a little eye so you can attach your keychain or little eye hooks, jump rings to it. So that's what I'm gonna do next. This is out of me. So I have a little head pin here with it's like cut at the angle to make like a needle. I don't have all, then all that would make it way easier. And then what you want to do is push it through like that. So we got all you just push it through, make your hole. And then you would run. I have with me some aluminum beading wire or aluminum wire. Just to run through the same hole. Like so. I just have that there to run the, my pilot hole basically through. Bring it through across to hold it. And then just wrap around. Oop, try to wrap it near the top. Just go around a few times. Like so. Try to bring this as close as possible. And then run it out like two inches or so. And cut it. Get rid of your excess. And you have this little hook here that's not going to pull apart when you or a little loop around it so it goes apart. And the cone goes over perfectly. So then it hides everything all around. And you can start your wrap right next to your project. So here, I don't have one of those round pliers. I used to have one around, but I have seemed to misplace it. But if you do have one, you can run this as close as you can, bring this down, and just wrap. Wrap around a few times. It'll push the cone down. So I'll tie it up on the rope itself. And then you want to cut close to it here. Get your plier and just wrap that little end around. And then bring this to where you want it. And that's it. And then you have a little hook where a little eye hole to where you can have your project started. And then you can add other jump ring to it like I did here. So it has a little more mobility. And then you can throw something on it, like key ring or badge holder or whatever you want. Something that can be replaced and be used over and over again. So that's how I start that. So my next Nope. Clear everything off. Next steps would be how. To okay, so now I'm gonna show you guys how to wrap. As you can see, what I did was give you a closer look at what a how it looks. If you can find silver, use silver. If you can find gold, use gold. 
a short cone like I do use that or long cones, use that. But this is what I have right now because my beach shop is closed due to quarantine, but there's always online options like shipwreck and just look up cones and look up aluminum wire. 18 gauge that I used. And your paracord. I'm not making a long piece, I'm just doing this example. So nothing's really set. So now I'm gonna get my needle, my thread, the boring part of everything, getting everything set and prepped to get wrapped. For one needle I'm using, I'm using size 12 needle with my Nemo, I think it's called that, Nemo B wire or string. I don't use uh, fish line, fire, wire line, fire wire. I think that's what people use. I would like to try it, but I don't know how to do it, so this is the way I do it. If you know someone who knows how to use that, I would like to know, then I could show you guys how that's done. Because it does look interesting. So I'm just tying the knot up real fast. Boom. This is a double knot, nothing too fancy. Put close. So. Sometimes it's good to start with like that. So once you get long, this is, I don't know how long this is. It'll be that long. So most times they're twice as long and the longer you get, the more hard it is when you try to twist here. So it's good to have this so you can put it onto like a swivel. So you hook it on and twist. So then this is not going like that. So that's one reason to start with that first. Okay, so normally I start like an inch or so back from what I'm doing. The only reason for that is I can wrap around and then start down. So when I do start my wrap, I can hide my knot that I have instead of having my knot really close. So just run it through, just like that. I mean, this is wire here, so you can bend this around so it can be straight. So add beads like so, all around. So first I'll do white, because it's a nice contrast. I don't really, do a huge long run most of the time. Some people do a long, huge run where they run maybe six inches worth of beads on their first. I try to do three to two inches, maybe less than that sometimes. So it's just whatever you're comfortable with. If this is the first time doing it, just start with something small and just twist slowly. Don't try to twist too hard, too fast, because then you'll twist your rope. You want to try to keep your rope as straight as possible without you having to put too, many, too much tension onto it or else I hear peace while I want to twist with it once it's done. So once you have enough on there, you can use your hand to actually grip your piece and twist and keep this free. And just add more beads. And twist. I don't really twist my piece, I don't try to twist the rope. And I have my, hopefully you guys can see, when I do this, I keep my attention going upwards as I twist this piece. So, I push these forward, my thumb, my finger, and have the piece go up. So then there's always the upward tension with the beads. And then when I 
go through. I then get to the end of my beads. I do one extra twist with it so then I can have it to hold as I secure the two beads or the wrap down. Normally I run through just in front of where I set my last bead, my last bead's at. Run it through the center as much as possible. So then when it comes through, it goes through here. When it comes through, it goes through here and it runs through and it secures these two down and pushes it. Then I run through the last two beads that I have and come back through. So then when I start again, I'm starting through the last two beads and it sets the two. Then you can push this up so then it sits nicely against your cone. So let's do another set. With a different color, just to get some contrast. I guess I don't add too much beads, and nor do I keep my beads in a jar. I do keep my beads in jars, like so. But when I'm actually beading, I have them all, I keep them on a string, on a tank. Because then it's easier for me to just pull off and easily string my my thread. Do, 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 do. Just a simple wrap. Once you did it in, one twist, bring it up, go on the opposite side of the string, next to your work, and the last bead, like that. Bring it through. And then it pulls it close, tightens, go through the last two beads, and then you're set for the next part, your next section. I mean, some people are really, um, aren't really particular about where they have their bead, last beads set. Because I like to have my beads kind of lined up on one side, like here. Here's where I started, but I have it here. Most of the time I have it where the colors meet up together on one side all the way down. Just so then when you're showing a piece like this, it's very nice and it's really presentable. But then where the colors meet together, it's on one side. So then you don't ever see it when you're either wearing it or you have it presented to somebody. It's not visible as much. So just keep that in mind when you're doing stuff. Is how you want to present your work. Because some people really don't, it don't matter to them because it's their style. But with me, it, I like to keep everything really nice looking. I don't know. So if someone has a piece of my work, I want them to really see how there's no colors overlapping, no, no, I guess, color transition, where they can actually see it when they have it, when they're wearing it. I want it to be invisible, so here you can see that transitions all together on one side. It's not noticeable when the colors are similar, but if there's a really big difference, then it stands out. So it's only like here. And this part here, if you're trying to do like multiple sections of this, you're going to have that big seam that red colors match together. But it doesn't matter to you, you can do it any way you want. But this is all done with size 13 beads. And this one here is done with 11s. So with 11s, it does go faster because it covers more area. With 13s, it's more compact, close together, smaller beads. So, what takes me, what is this? Six, eight, or six, nine, ten. 
can here by the inch. Maybe a little three quarters of an inch. So the same amount here is just here, probably half inch. So as you can see, it's quite the difference in size and the way it covers. So with 11, you get a little wider, thicker bead, a width of on the rope. With 13, you get more thinner, more detail you get with it. But it's a lot harder and it's a little more expensive. So that's my little demo of what I do. I'll go around one more time, show you guys how I do it. Do what I do. So, like I said, I just throw a few on at a time. I don't do too much. I don't want to try to do a long run, but once you get good, then you can do long runs that where you can wrap it around a few times and have it laid where you want. Where you can run multiple colors at once. You can do, like I said, two inches long, a whole set two inches long, and you can probably finish one or two of these in a day. I know some people who get like three, two, six, ten in a day. And they do a lot of work. So just like that. I mean, once you get it down, you get it down. Like a long example. Boom. Run this through twice, three times. And we'll run in a different color. We'll just run a few colors just for that. We'll run this. Because I'm not really picky about what I'm doing right now. This is an example of how you can just go do a long run. Once you get familiar with your beads, you'll know how much you need to go around once. So, oops, I got my string caught up funny. So, this is quite a bit, almost six inches to go wrap around, which I'll probably go around, I don't know, maybe 10, 12 times. But you don't need to hold your string back here and try to wrap it. Just do as much as you can first. Just hold it. Enough tension to go around because you don't want to be twisting this like this and trying to do that because it'll make a twist with, within your rope and your project will be you wanted to twist, which would be bad because if you're trying to make it flat or just keep it straight, that's it. And every now and then you'll have like a little gap like that, and all you do is reverse it, add a little more pressure go and just keep twisting and twisting. I have a lot of issues with what I do because like I, I see on my Instagram that I'm a perfectionist of what I do. So I look at my work and examine as I go, see if the tension's right, see if the gaps are right. Just expecting every Little every row I apply on because if it's not right, it's a chance for me to go back and redo it again. And just redo it. This is why I don't really like adding a lot of time because I'm not good at adding a huge string, I don't have the coordination for it. Yeah. So just like that, you can add. I know people can do this like crazy, and I'm not that good. Nope. Oh, well, yep. But like I said, you can do that. I run it looks like that. Natural time. 
add another almost double the size. But just make sure that when you're securing this that you run far enough back that you're not going to miss these two beads. As long as it's back behind those two beads and you're good when you're trying to apply it. Just put it through next to it between these two lines. So you run your one wrap around, bring it here, secure on this side, so then your holes this back that way because it's pushing this way. You would come this way and I'll hold this I'll hold the uh, tension that way, hold the tension this way. So those beads will be pushed down and won't move back or forward. But yeah, that's it. Mm -hmm. If you get too long, so that was a short little video on how I do my wrap around my rope and how I add my cone and end. So, hopefully, you guys enjoyed. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. If you have any comments, leave them in the comments. Hopefully, you guys learn something from this. If not, Tell me how to improve so I can improve my video for next time, for the next person. Until next time, Red Creation, out.